here, there, and there. I feel like we're in a news newsroom. We're, we're in a little newsroom, cameras. three cameras. Hello, everyone, and what is, is that your phone? Mm -hmm. That's your phone. Uh, oh, maybe it's because I'm going live and it's telling me on the phone. I don't know. Anyway. anyway, so welcome to Mind of the Founder, episode 19, where we answer your questions and give you updates to what's going on in the world of FB&W and, um, and this crazy mind. And so, how are you doing? Good. How's this week? How was the week? Busy. Busy? Goods? Bads? Any good. announcements? Kind Bar? Kind Bar's on board, so that was good. Kind Bar's joined our food drop for next, um, um, <laughs> um, next, uh, food Friday. drop, Friday, yeah, Friday. food drop Friday. We food did our Friday. shopping this weekend, we still have a little more shopping to do, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll be doing another food drop Friday, and then yeah, Kind Bar's on, so. What else? What else new? Um, we have a new intern on board. Her name's Maddie. Yeah, new intern, Mad D with a D. Maddie. Madeline, right? She's uh yeah, but she refers to herself as Maddie. Yeah, I know, I just She's helping us out with PR and outreach, which is really huge because that takes a whole lot of off of my plate. She's been doing like she's crushing she's, it already, yeah, she, right? It's just her first week this week. She was crushing it on day one. We got yeah, off the no. phone and she was like, Here you go and I'm like Wow, like I'm excited about this. So moment. yeah, that's exciting. Um, what else? We we got somebody that uh, well that's interested in our sales um, position. Yeah, for, she's good too. Hopefully, she's. Yeah, I think it's. Decisions. I think it's. It, it looks. It's looking promising. Yeah. So she fits. She fits exactly what we're looking. Yeah, for. she fits the mold of what we're looking for. So yeah. that's good. So we've got a lot of things going on over here with F B and W. Um, once again, this was what this was your sixth week or fifth week? I started on July fourth. You say that every time. I can't do math. So July fourth, so is yeah. it fifth week? Five weeks? Ago? Here, let's look at the thing. <laughs> it's a little over a month. That's what I've been referring it to as. Yeah. So last month, so it was one, two, three. Four, five. So it was your fifth week. We're starting your sixth week tomorrow. So anyway, here we go. Let's go. So we want to. I want to hit on a few things today. I want to talk about this horseshit that's going on in Charleston, um, because I think it's Maybe. freaking trash. Um, and uh, but we we have a couple questions that we want to that we want to, because that's what we're supposed to be doing here is answering your questions. Mm -hmm. And then we want to tell you about this little thing that we're going to be doing called Day Without Food. And it's going to be in September and we want to ask as many people to join. So we're going to go 24 hours without food on the day of our food drop. The food drop that we're holding with uh, Whole, Foods. Whole Foods. And and who else? Deep River Snacks. Deep River Snacks. They're a potato chip, uh, or like a... Organic. Like, organic and they got a little tagline it's like um give a chip give a chip mm -hmm. do you give a chip that's what it is we give a chip i give a chip yeah we give a chip do you give a chip and it's like do you give a shit basically no they don't i don't think it's do you give a chip yeah it's like do you give a chip yeah it's like is that their i think it, i don't know what their hashtag is. anyway but they're an awesome company so we're doing that so anyway let's jump right in it what's the first question first question and please submit your questions at ask at fbnw.us um because yeah do that and ask anything. It can be personal. We don't. We don't, yeah. we don't discriminate. And yeah, I, once again, I don't know the questions until she asks. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. First question. Do they brought to you by Coors Light? We'll get around to that. Even though later. they're not paying us. But, you know what I mean? Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your design process and who does the designing? Oh, it's the lack of design process. Mm -hmm. Um, the lack of design process, because everybody thinks, I'm going to keep playing my hair if I don't just throw my hat off. I'm just throw my hat off. Um, everybody thinks that um, like when you have a, a line that design is, is like, oh, you design. No, no. Like, how much time do I spend on design? Like, itty, itty, bitty. Yeah, teeny, tiny. It's because just kind of like, okay, we can do some designs 
Because like I've like I've said to everybody, like at BMW, I don't. This is one of our old olds. Whatever. Don't pay attention to what we wear. Um, the design part, while it's fun and everything, it's it's not what the company's about. Like, that's just our channel to get uh, get people to buy our product. So the goal, once again, is to impact as many children, and we do that through shirts. So our design process, it's not, you know, we have our bodies that we like, and we try to add new bodies now every season we're going to go into. Um, but what we're getting to, we're getting on calendar finally, which means that we'll be designing a new collection every three months. And that new collection, since we're doing, you know, we do graphics and on basic bodies, basic um Bodies. You know, we're not doing anything fancy schmancy yet. We don't have the capacity to do that. But so the process that we do, and we're in the middle of it right now, we just finished. It's about 99% finished, spring 18. Um, but we're getting feedback. So after we decide on the bodies, let's assume those are done. How we go in the design process on the, the, the shirts is we look at our sales, previous sales from... Um, from what we've what we've sold we see what's selling well what's not selling well and then we try to focus on you know going in that direction and we've got two different styles of graphics uh, that we do not really styles but we do the positive uh, motivate -y, feel good like that and then we do what we call our fun trendy Inspo. <laughs> no, that's the that's the inspo ones. Oh, I'm saying oh, yeah, the other ones. Yeah, just fun, just trendy fun stuff. That so we drink a lot of wine. You drink a lot of wine. Oh yeah, yeah, you don't drink. So we but drink a lot of wine and we sit down and we just start throwing out stuff that we think would sell. Yeah. And we go through a shitload of stuff. I've got about thirty to forty people, sometimes up to fifty, that that I send mock after mock uh, mock-ups of the designs and get their feedback. Now, while this sounds like, oh, I wish I was one of those people, they fucking hate it. No, you don't want to be like that. They right? hate it because I blow them up. Yeah. And they're like, all right, enough, enough. But it's like one day you'll be like, hey, FB and w used to send to me. Yeah, um, I guess so. They, they can go back and say that. Or like if it, it gets made, they're like, oh, I voted for that one. Yeah, or you didn't vote for that. Yeah, but for now it's just like stop with the emails. Yeah, stop. <laughs> um, but I think to the question though, how, what was the second part of it? Like, who how does to, the designing? It's what's your design process and who does uh, the designing? Well, we both do the designing, really. Yeah, it's, it's just it's it's really anybody yeah. can do the design. We have our our sales our sales team. Mm -hmm. um, they submit stuff. I've got friends that'll just shoot over things like, oh, have you ever thought of doing a shirt that said this? Yeah. And if it's good, you know, my cousin's, my cousin has suggested a design that made it through um, and sold in stores. And so we're, mm -hmm. we're up for anything and everything. Yeah. Um, Whenever like a good idea pops in our head, we're like, well, what do you think about this? I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then draft it out in a, in a layout. Does it look good? And then we sit on it and then we're like, that was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> where where we used to be, we'd just come out with them as as we came up. But now that now that our wholesale is getting bigger, we've got to we've got to do it on calendar. So we'll be coming out with new graphics every every three months. Um, so right now we're working on spring. We'll try to have summer finished up by November. Um, yeah, November we'll try to have summer finished up. And uh, so yeah, every three months, and we come out. We're gonna try to hold about 20 graphics in our wholesale um, side. Um, hey to who said hi. It's sideways, so I'm not sure. Um, but um, we're going to try to stick to to about eight, uh, 20 graphics, 20 to 25 graphics per collection. Um, and we're going to get to where we'll have a separate, a completely separate uh, website side as well. Some graphics will go on both, but some won't. Well, the problem with this, though, what she, the girlfriend's hating now, is like some of our new spring stuff she loves so much, but she can't wear oh, it. Oh, yeah. It sucks because, like, I know it's going to do so well, like, right now, also, because it's, like, hot and trending, but we can't release it and I won't wear it. And yeah, so that's, that's one of the problems with having to produce it um, so far ahead. But 
It will be. It's a classic. It's I can tell it's going to be a classic. Anyway, not just so, that one. I'm the one I'm thinking of. That one. The I one think. that you came up with the other day. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, that's it. There's nothing fancy behind it. Um, we've got a board at our at our work where anytime we have something that we think is good, we just put it up. And then at the when we get ready to come together and start designing and throwing out our ideas, we'll pull them and throw them there. But the other thing is, like our especially with our new spring designs, there's some that are like borderline more adult or more risque, and it, it's always like hard for us to like think well we really like it obviously because you know that's what we're into but are we potentially like you know like um, isolating certain mm -hmm. clientele or customers who are like maybe like oh i don't like that like that's that's a little too like i don't know what the word is like risque i guess it's, okay. it's, it's, it's not like they're not bad it's not like curse words per se or like negativity or violence or anything but it's stuff that's just kind of like yeah one of the ones we're coming out with that we just came out yeah. with is this adulting shit is hard. hard yeah and so it's like but well, shit is asterisk yeah and i push for the asterisk i didn't because, want the asterisk but she did because i'm so. like i can see how like more conservative fans are like oh i i mean i like what you guys are about but i don't support cussing or something even though it's like in a humorous way so it's always a struggle when we come up with certain designs where we're like should we move forward with it is it going to appeal to enough people or are we just doing it because we really like it yeah because we're blind yeah and it, it's funny because we have such different sense of humors yeah her and i so there's some things that she like oh my god this is so funny i'm like are you fucking kidding me and then and vice versa yeah yeah hence this week Tyler and I were so for this one, and you've never even heard the same. Well, that was a, a grammatical thing. It was just weird to me. It didn't yeah, but make it's, sense. It's, but okay. I guess it's like a thing that people say that I've never heard of. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. All right, next question. What was what was that IG story about with the laptop last week? Oh, shit. So, okay. So, the see where the cores is right there? It's the right cores there is fine. To the side. Because... Patrick and I share a desk at the warehouse. So what we happened? And I have 25% of the real estate on this table, and he has 75% because he has like a large monitor, a large laptop, and like a bunch of papers, and like one gallon jug of water, and at least a beer bottle or a glass of wine a day. And I have like my laptop, this mouse, and a little water bottle. And the one of the interns was over Cynthia, and she was um, talking to us about like our bag campaign that I have her shooting for us. And then he's like, "Well, what about this?" And then there's like a beer propped up like here, and then like he's like puts the paper bag here where he's like trying to give her an example, and like he's trying to shove like a shirt in there, knocks over the beer onto my laptop. It, it legit fell on. Don't even try that. To the, it's <laughs> on to the laptop. And then so she picked her laptop up and mine was right beside it. So it rolled onto my laptop and I was oh shit, so I picked it up. And the thing was, I hadn't even had a sip of the beer yet. I had just opened it and sat it down. Yeah. And um and, spilled all over and my it laptop. spilled all over the laptop. But after two days, two and a half days. I was so I was advised. By like Google. So if you ever spill Apple, a beer on your laptop, don't turn it on for at least forty-eight hours. But I picked it up, and the screen went black. And my natural reflex was to press the power button to see if my computer will turn on, which is like the biggest mistake ever that you can do because it it'll just fry the circuit. And then I was like, okay. but then luckily Cynthia was there, so I was just like, I don't know, maybe I was distracted, and so I wasn't like Stay overreacting. Calm. So I was just like, oh my god, and then I just. I was drawing it, and I was, like, talking to her at the same time, so I was like, I don't want to hold her up. Long story yeah. short, the laptop... Um, turned back on. It turned back on. It turned back on before 48 right hours. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I was, like, moving it again, and I accidentally pressed the on button in the move, and it turned on. And I'm just... I, I'd like to say that was a MacBook Air. Yeah. Um, my my uh, nice piece of shit HP Envy... Potato-ass camera. Did, didn't even turn <laughs> off. Yeah. Didn't even turn off. Beer spilt on it. 
shook that shit off, dried it, and it was good. So that was the question. What is, yeah. So that's what happened with the laptop. Um, and it, believe me, I wasn't happy about it. I hate making mistakes like that. Um, but it was an honest mistake. I had blocked it with a paper bag, picked up a paper bag, and just slung it. So what so, do we learn? So what do we learn? We learn to make sure that if we put anything that can obstruct it on, you never put something that can obstruct a beer or a glass of wine in front of it. That's what we learned. Now, I think what we learned was put open containers of liquid to the side, to the side not yeah. in the middle of the table between where we work. Well, it was only there Obviously because, the, because the intern was, so nobody, we weren't sitting down. I just don't typically sit up there because that's where my mouse would have gone. So anyway, it survived. It was Stella too, so I was a little nervous because that's known as the wife beater. Over Is in, it? Yeah. Over in your country, England, known as the wife beater. Why? Yeah. Because people they get really it. drunk yeah. and belligerent on it? Because it's so strong that people get drunk and they get mm -hmm. belligerent on it. Yeah. That's what the English and it was really Irish carbonated. Is. That's for sure. It's beer. Beer's carbonated. So anyway, um, and then my keys yeah. are sticky. Yep. So that's that was that story. Yeah, that was what that was. But we wanted to limit this to two questions today because I wanted to go into this this little. I just wanted to take a real quick minute or two and discuss this whole Charleston thing. Um, it's it's and and you as well because I know. I just I I don't I don't get it. I I, no. I can't I can't quite understand how people are just built with or 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 have that much hate in their body. Mm -hmm. And it frustrates me that regardless and I'm not saying just the white supremacist pieces of shit. I'm saying every side any side as a person, and this speci specific one is is for the the fuck nut white supremacists, mm -hmm. like whatever. The extreme, extreme, the extreme, example. extreme example of that. Right? What what is going on this weekend, and what's like? It's upsetting. It's it doesn't make sense. It like we're in twenty seventeen. We have access to internet, TV various news stations that present different angles of stories yet it's some people can still be so close-minded even though they they have access to every side of the story to form a better opinion of something or some people but they choose to be narrow-minded and only think in one way and it's like well what benefit does it have you to be so hateful towards a group of people how does it make your life better? Mm. Do you, what is do you the wake point? up and like, mm, I love being like, yeah, I like, hate being. Do you need a, something to be negative about in your life? It's, it's like, and and like, just how does it affect you? Like how, like, like it can having that hate can can't do good for you, no, right? It's not. And healthy. then the reason you have that hate, why is it that you have that hate? What what was it that? Like what was done to you, or what is what is affecting you so much to have that hate? Mm -hmm. That's what I like. That's where I really want to know. What I really want to know is, fuck the fact that you have hate. Why do you have that hate? And is it what has it really done to you? Yeah, and why blanket like your hate towards an entire group when you know it's like individual and do and same with these like white supremacists like not all of them are ex as extreme as the ones who were the you know the main instigators at yesterday's rally or protest but at the same time it's like like i'm kind of blanketing a group of people like that now because that's yeah, what i see in the yeah, media because if you're a fucking if you're a white supremacist you're a piece of shit like like i'm a white guy and and as good, like i feel i'm lucky as fuck Right? Like, why should I be mad at any other? Like, look at what the fuck. Like, everything. Everybody gives me the benefit of the doubt because I'm a white guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why should I be mad yeah. at other? Like, I've got it good because of that. And 
and I just I I can't get with this whole rhetoric of fucking just the hate. Like, don't be a dick. It's just that simple. I'm lucky to be living in LA. If I were in any other, not any other, but certain states in the U.S., like I would feel so unwelcome. Yeah, but you and I would still... develop hate because I would feel hated on. Like it's like hate fosters more hate. And when you foster more hate, there's more violence and there's more crime and which keeps fueling the hate. So if, if we just stop hating, maybe we can all learn to like get along. But it's like, I can see me being in that state and be like, you know, fuck those like supremacists. Like they're so bigoted and like, why should I even bother like working with them? Then I'll show them what they want to see. And I can totally see that. Yeah, but it's just... Like I said, nobody, nobody's born with that hate. Nobody's born with that. It's, it's about. Do you think? What do I think? What I think some people are raised in households as children, and they don't know anything other than that at an early age, and it's oh, yeah. up to them well, to yeah, like unlearn the... it. So, well, born into it, sort of. They have they they had no other truth in their life until they were older to learn anything different. Yeah, but that's that. Like you said, it's like there's, we're not in um, countries like North Korea, China, you know. China's not. I, I'm saying countries that don't allow you to get to the internet. I'm talking about communist China. Oh, like it, we've oh. got the resources to to educate ourselves. Yeah. So you know, I regardless of I know that it's your environment. I know that it's the way you you know who you surrounded yourself with growing up. I, I understand that, right? They're not born that way, but they're bred that way. And mm-hmm. so I like, it takes pe- it takes them to like get outside of that fucking box and see that, oh, not all black people are like this. Not all Muslims are like that. Not all white people are like this. You know, it takes people to get out of their fucking box and open up and have more conversation, right? That's build goes back to building bridges, not fucking walls. Mm-hmm. How do you not expect to like put this hate in when you have like a pres- the president of the United States that basically is saying, "Fucking let's build, let's let's." Yeah, he's justifying. He's justifying. Behavior. And if the president and, says so, then. And I don't know. want I don't want this to get political because I want it to be more of just like. Don't be a dick. It's just that simple. Like if you like, what what is it? And I would love anyone to tell me what is it that makes you on the inside want to be a dick and mean to somebody, right? I I don't. And I'm not saying I was always a you know a stand up whatever, but I never did any hate shit. You know, no. never like that. I might have like picked on or something, but I feel bad about it now. But it took me getting out of a fucking box and like really seeing and meeting other people to realize that we all fucking bleed the same blood. We all like we're all it is is a fucking skin color, and or a reli- like how can you hate somebody so bad because of what they look like or what they? I don't fucking get it. It's like if we start treating people as people, like individuals. That's a start. I think right now people are just generalizing people based on like certain religions yeah. and color and whatever. But you know, I, I'm pretty sure that you know even these white supremacists have some friends of color. Like no, they don't. No, they really? Don't. You have no idea how that's. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I was born on this side of the world. So and then when I came here, I came yeah, to LA, you, you which is like the melting LA. pot. Yeah, so melting pot. You never experienced any of this. Yeah. Either. I mean, I went, I was born, like, raised as a minority in England, but everyone was, I went to private school, so maybe I didn't really experience it in the public school arena, but, you know, to me, when I see this stuff on TV, it's really upsetting for me, because I think of how would I feel if I were targeted like that, and it's just, it's really upsetting that, you know, there's, that it's 2017, and people are still so close-minded. And... So, and it's also to the people out there that just, I don't even want to go into that, but it's just really, just, I, I, I just wanted to say, I just, I, I can't understand how people can be filled with so much hate and 
in America now. They know him that goddamn well. We, everybody here, unless you're a fucking Native American, is a fucking Everyone's immigrant. an immigrant. Everybody's a fucking immigrant. I think they forget that. Yeah. Or they yeah. deny it. The way, the way, the way the U.S. looked at the Irish back in the day, mm-hmm. coming over, the way they looked at the Jews coming over, like, there's always been people that have come over that have been the new immigrants that get hated on, and then they mm-hmm. become a part of the, you know, the U.S. It's what we're built on. And just, it, it's... There's no point. It doesn't add anything to your life to hate people. Yeah. It does not. Just it, it adds nothing. So um, just if you're one of those hateful people, man, just 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 ask yourself like, what is it adding to your life? Yeah. And and if it's adding something, then it's probably not a good thing. Yeah. Then so, that's kind of questionable. Uh, enough about that that negative stuff. I just want to hit on that because I feel I don't know like we're over here trying to do really really great things um, by doing good. And, and we get a lot of, we get a lot of this from some people. It's like, well, you're helping, you're helping kids that, you know, their parents have six kids and why do they have so many kids that they can't afford to feed them? That's a generalization. I know. That's what I'm getting to. And it's like, it's like, well, A, the, the, that's not why we do what we do. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't care your decision, like, a child should never suffer because of their parents' decisions. Right. Right. Children don't choose, and that's why, like, we like to give to children because they don't have a choice. And it's not their parents' like decisions per se. It's like life circumstances. What yeah, if their parents lost their jobs? Yeah, and there's a lot of things. You they, know, it's just they're just stuck in this rut. I feel that people only care about shit that affects them. So if it doesn't affect mm-hmm. me, I don't care. Um, so get out of here. With it. And it's like, I think it's just awful. Like, there's enough of everything to go around. And just just at the end of the day, you don't have to be a crusade, like a, 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 a person that's trying to, like, change the world. Just don't be a dick. Yeah. It's just that simple. So anyway, on to uh, the one thing I really want to hit on um, is day without food. So as you know, we get bags of groceries to children in need in the U.S. because, you know, the statistic of, one in five children in America um, are at risk of going to bed hungry every night. Mm-hmm. And there's some children that do that every night. And there's, you know, so we want, we want to do this and we got this, or I, I thought of this legit over a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to start it this, this September, September the 1st. Mm-hmm. September I'm going to do that September 1st, 12 a.m., I guess. Yeah, it's, that's the day. Okay. That's the 24 hours. So from 12 a.m. to like 6 a.m., it's going to be easy. Yeah, while we're <laughs> probably sleeping. Um, so what we want to do is we want to start a little thing where we go um, once hours. a year, 24 hours. It's going to be called a day without food where we go 24 hours without eating anything. We're only going to have water. water. That's it. Um, and... If we can, uh, what we want to do, it's we're going to do it. It's going to be the day of our food drop. Tyler's going to do Tyler's it. Tyler's going to do it. Sarah's going to do it. We're going to have it. a few of our interns do it. Uh, the rest of you interns need to confirm. Rest of the rest <laughs> of the interns need to confirm. But we'll be putting out stuff, and we're going to have a hashtag. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be hashtag. Day without food. Day without food. There isn't one, so we yeah, own so it. <laughs> hashtag day without food. And we want to encourage... Um, um, encourage all of our our people to to take that day and go without food. We'll be putting out a a little blog next week newsletter. But I'm saying a little uh, like a post, a picture that's that's saying that that's what we're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. be. I, I'm gonna do that next week. And yeah, but what I'm there. saying, I I'd like that anybody that wants to do this, they take that as well and they post it because I want oh, you know, sure. if, yeah, you, yeah, if yeah. you're going to do a day without food, I want you to talk about you know, not talk. I just say, listen, I'm joining FBNW on this day about uh, day without food. Mm-hmm. You know, try to raise awareness about um, you know, uh, issue. food insecurity um, mm-hmm. in America. And even if like you don't do it, share it. 
and maybe yeah. other people will see it and they'll do it. I yeah, mean, it'd be like, the it's point too is to fucking hard. I can't do it. If you yeah. can't do it, try to do it. And if you have to break it, say 3 p.m., you're like, I can't take it any longer. Then you've learned something. Then you, you know, you felt like, something. put it out there and say, I tried. I yeah. tried to go a day without food and it sucks. Yeah. Um, we're, so we're going to be documenting this hour by hour. We'll do little updates on our Instagram stories and Facebook where we just kind of vlog, like, okay, hour mm -hmm. four, this is how we're feeling. And, um see i'm sure we'll make it yeah oh i i will make it i know i'm gonna make it. i'm gonna it's gonna suck i'm gonna oh, but if yeah. but if i can't make it then yeah what the fuck's that say about the company you know what i mean so believe me i'm gonna make it so we're gonna do day without food september 1st 24 hours no food be ready to not like, even juice not even juice nada just agua um and yeah, and and that's the day of our food drop too. So we'll be at the food drop checking in with you guys. Um, You'll be hearing how miserable and grumpy we are because we're, we're going without passing food. out food to <laughs> as the we're kids, passing out food to the children. Um, and then at midnight, we'll like we'll maybe nibble on something. So anybody that wants to join, stay tuned to our join our newsletter so you can see the update about it. We'll be putting out a blog about it. And Just join the newsletter in general. Yeah. I'm putting work into this thing now. Yeah, do it. Jeez, we we'll got some updates. coming out now. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, that's that. And then the last thing I really want to hit on is to say that my family, my mother, I mean, and and two of my cousins, but my mother is coming to visit me in Los Angeles first time for the ever. first time ever i've been out here over nine years no right? no i've been out here on and off are you saying no no i'm saying this last this, run or this last run i moved here in february of 2009 so i've been out here almost nine years so eight and a half years mm -hmm. right? Um, my mom's never visited them. She's never been to LA. Neither are my cousins. So I'm super excited uh, for them to come out and see what we do and how we do it. She's going to come to one of the food drops. We're going to go to a Dodger game. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I just wanted to say that. I want to end it on a good note. All that talk about those hateful fucks yeah. doing bad shit over there. Got and every, and everywhere. Got so, um, yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in once again. Remember, submit your questions at ask at FBNW, FBNW the acronym for better, not worse, dot US. And um, that's it. So, yeah, photo shoot day. Yeah, oh, photo shoot today. Get to it. To oh, eight. Yeah. So, new photos and stuff coming soon. So, later, Gators.